Queso clouds. I love them, but I've always had difficulty making them. The technique of making the clouds in this tutorial was made possible by the wonderful Sumi on the Discord. Now this tutorial is split into two parts, the base shader which Sumi provided and the small addition I added to make the clouds influenced by external light. If you want to, you can stop by the first part because the clouds would look pretty good by then already. But without any further ado, let's begin. Alright, so before we begin texturing, I just want to introduce you to the scene I have over here. Before I address the big plane in the room, literally, I'm going to first show you the scene. So as you can see in my camera, I just have some grass. Uh, it's a small plane in front of the camera with a little, a little cat rig in front of the camera to add like that cool silhouette over here. And afterwards, I have the sun. It's basically just a sphere with a very bright area light in front of it. Uh, and that is the sun. But the important part I want to draw your attention to is this area light over here. As you can see, the huge plane above our tiny little environment um, is being affected by this area light, which I set to around 5600. This is so that I can sh demonstrate to you the external influence I added to the texture node. So after we do the base texture of the clouds, we will add the external influence that this light will help. Okay, so for the base shader, uh, the one Sumi invented, we are going to need a bunch of different planes. As you can see, I have a huge plane over my little environment over here, which I slanted a little bit. As you can see when you go to the orthographic view, it's slanted just a little bit downwards. So if you want to um, make the plane not as big, but you want it to cover the entire sky, you can rotate it on the Y, and as you can see in the um, camera viewport, which is over here on the side, it fills the entire sky. So instead of duplicating it into a bunch of planes like Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, that's gonna take a lot of work. All I did was I went to modifiers, added an array modifier, set it to constant, and upped the Z axis to 0.12. And this is how many planes I got. I have around eight planes. So once you d decide about the number of planes, I would recommend first following the tutorial so you can understand the shader. And then afterwards you can add more planes because the more planes you add, the more detail the clouds will have. But also the more planes there are, the heavier it'll be on your computer or your laptop. So I recommend starting with eight or even seven. Once you have the array modifier set up on your plane, you just need to apply it. Later on, if we need to, we'll have to scrunch this down a little bit, scale it down the z-axis. But right now, I think it's okay. Alright, so, for the base shader, we are going to delete the PSDF because we do not need it. So, X. Okay, so now we are going to add two things. We're going to add a gradient node, and we're going to add a noise texture node. So, control T, both of those. Let's uh, separate th these two. Okay. For the gradient node, I'm first going to add a color ramp. There we go. Control shift click it. So this gradient node before we edit anything on the color ramp, we'll have to rotate it on all the axes 90 degrees. So drag your cursor over all the axes and type 90. Boom. Okay, so usually for a normal cloud, we will have only two sliders on our color ramp. So the black will be on the right and the white will be on the left, as you can see. But in our case, since it's a sunset, we are going to need three sliders. So the white will be over here, and the black will be over here. This is why I recommend playing around with this shader later on after doing the tutorial, because then you'll understand it better. Okay, so now we have the color ramp, like so. Black on both sides, and the white scrunching to the right. Okay, and then we are going to have another color ramp for the noise texture. This one is also going to be swapped, so black on the right, and white on the left then we scrunch them around the middle and then we bring in a mix color and plug this in. so gradients at the bottom noise at the top and this mix color is set to multiply now let's control shift click let's see what we have so far uh, we have a little bit of noise not so interesting but you know it's there so all we need to do is we need to edit the noise texture uh, in this again, I would recommend playing around with because you can get so many cool cloud shapes by just playing around with these four nodes or basically these three nodes. Okay, so what I would do for my scene is I would set the scale to 3, the detail to 12, the roughness to 0.65, and then I'm going to change the location. 
this location basically gives us different cloud shapes so whichever shape you want you can just scroll through the location on the mapping node i'm going to set it to 4.1 on the z-axis and i'm going to importantly scale it down on the z-axis as well so on this mapping node of the noise texture i'm going to scale it down to 0 0.13 it's not very visible over here but it helps with the fake cloud geometry because as you can see if i put it to one it makes it just flat but if we make it 0 0.13 it stretches it throughout the planes making it look 3d right now it doesn't look very 3d because there's no transparency okay so we'll have to fix that right now so let us first control j this so it is one single thing and then i'm going to go to the texture properties so while i go to the texture properties i'm going to scroll down to settings change blend mode to alpha hashed and right now let's set shadow mode to none because we don't need the clouds giving any shadow all right perfect bring this down here and then bring in a mixed shader this entire tree we just made will be plugged into the factor of that mixed shader and then we'll have a transparent node plugged into the top of the mixed shader and then we'll have an emission node plugged into the bottom this emission will be the thing we edit to change the colors of our clouds. So, Cosmos have clicked to view it. Boom. Now, as you can see, we have our clouds. There is some transparency. And also, it looks like the clouds are 3D. Due to the squashing we did over here on this mapping node. But, yeah, it is very white. There are a few things we can change for the color. Let's add the base color for now. I'm going to add a color ramp before the emission. Plug this gradient into that color ramp i'm going to widen it a little bit okay now depending on the time of day you will light the clouds differently since it's sunset the clouds will have more light on top of it and will have more darkness at the bottom so i'm going to change the slider accordingly the top the right slide will be bright it's like a bright orange basically the bottom of the left will be a dark brown and the center will be a very vibrant orange and we'll crunch that a little bit now plug that into the emission and see how the colors change boom perfect so now as you can see there is the light on top which we can scrunch a little bit and then there is the orange in the center and obviously we can lower down the dark values a little bit so this is the base shader and if you want to you can stop here you can obviously edit the colors or change the lighting a little bit of the node but what i would like to do is i would like to go a bit further and i would like to have this light of the sun that we added here influencing the clouds and i would also like some color variation within these dark patches of the clouds itself so those are two things the first thing i'm going to add is the influence from the sun so i'm going to bring in a diffuse shader a shader to rgb and a color ramp so color ramp and then i'm going to bring in a mix color this mix color is going to be set to color dodge so control shift click Okay, now when we bring this up and then we crunch the slider like so, you see the place where there's an area light is affecting the clouds. So the more white you add, the more intense the light will be and the less you add, the less intense obviously. So you can play around with this. I like it around so. Perfect. And then the other thing we want to add is the color variation in the dark parts. I'm going to plug this color dodge into an add. I'm going to change this to add. And then I'm going to add again a noise texture. Control T that noise texture. Bring a color ramp in front of it. And then crunch the values in the middle. We don't need this so wide, so I'll make it smaller. Let's make it crunched in the middle. And then instead of adding it immediately, I'm going to duplicate the mix RGB set this to screen plug this noise texture into the b socket and then i'm going to plug this into the a socket of that screen so let's control shift click this 
as you can see we have some variation in values of this with uh, due to this noise texture but uh, it's a bit too big on my taste I'm going to scale it up a little bit so that we have more variation and then I'm also going to change the detail so make it maybe nine perfect and now we plug this into the factor of that ad and we can change the color to a bright orange so essentially this is going to distribute bright orange noise textures throughout the entire cloud so you can change the scale of that noise texture or make it bigger it's up to you but now when you plug this into the emission it's going to look a little bit more interesting so control shift click boom so now as you can see there's a bit more variation in the color which we can obviously change because right now i don't like how bright the bottom's got so we can just change this a little bit and instead of using the same color ramp we used for the um color dodge i'm going to control shift d this uh, color ramp scrunch it a little bit more so i'm going to make the dark colors like so plug this here in place so now it's not it's not gray i want it to be dark because then it truly represents the dark splotches of the cloud cut also click to view all right perfect and now all you need to do is we need to play around with the values and make it smoother you can do that like so and that is essentially how to make this amazing cloud texture um, what you could do is, I did this personally, I added a graded node from the back to make it a little darker. But, you know, that's personal preference, like a vignette. It's personal preference, you don't need to add it. Another thing you can do with this cloud texture is add a background cloud layer. So as you can see, we don't just have the main cloud texture. We have this other one over here at the back, which is a very light cloud texture. It's basically to fill in the empty spaces it's basically a simpler version of what we just made with the colors changed a little bit the clouds the noise texture scales just to be a bit higher and the color ramp a bit more lenient so not crunched up like the main primary cloud but set in the center and that's how you make beautiful anime clouds i definitely recommend playing around with the shader and employing different techniques to get some fun results but yes, a big thanks to Sumi and to those supporting me on the Patreon. Thanks for everything you do and the environment used in this tutorial will be available on the Patreon, inshallah. But that's it for me. Bye. Bye. Oh, it's good.